In this video, I want to show you how to design logos in Figma. Many people think that Figma is just for product design, web design, but you can do just about anything design wise. So today we're going to start with a simple logo, then do a medium and then a hard. So follow along and let's dive into it. Alrighty, so we're going to start with this one. And it, even though it looks complicated, the reason why I'm starting with this and this is quote unquote the easy one is because Figma just recently released a new tool, Radial Repeat. Uh, which allows you to basically start with one object like this and then repeat it into this shape. So let me just show you how I built this initial object. What I did was I just drew a curved line like this. And then uh, you click uh, Command CV on Mac and then you click Shift H Shift V to essentially re rotate it. Um, and then from there, we would just connect the two, the two shapes forming this kind of wave thing. Um, so just combine the two vector points and this won't look identical to that one, but it'll look pretty close. Um, from there, I just kind of went, went about tweaking it, making sure that it looks consistent like this consistent swoosh. We can drag it out here. then we can make it filled. Um, so I'm just gonna make a copy of it so I have it and then I can rotate it. And then on the right here, make sure you're on uh, Figma draw, you would select this, and then I would click here, which is the radial repeat tool. And once you press it, you see all these repeating uh, shapes appear. And then we can change it to pixels and we can hold alt and drag. And then we can adjust how many there are. So a really sweet tool that Figma created here. Um, and then we can just decrease the spacing there. And this is where it even gets cooler because if I adjust the main starting vector that we created this with, you can see that all of the others will start adjusting as well. So I'll just um, kind of tweak this a little bit until it looks like they're all in line there. So. Then I can just add a little bit of rounded corners here and you can see how that worked as well. And even though this is not identical to the logo there, it's a lot faster and a lot easier now with the Figma repeat. Um, and if I wanted it to have like these more fixed spaces, you would just kind of keep tweaking it. So that's very easy. Number one. So moving on to the second logo, this one, as you can see, is less organic like the first and very kind of geometric and structured. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first just kind of build the basics and then fix it on the with the geometry. So what I would do here is just draw a line and if you hold shift, it'll keep it straight. And let's change this to let's say 30. And then what I would do is add a space. And then the other line, and this is going to be our empty space. And now I'm just going to copy all of this and click, click uh, shift H to flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to combine these points here at the bottom. So I just do command E. Let's first uh, align them properly. So you see where the points intersect. That's where we want to align them to like this. And then we click uh, command E to essentially flatten this into one, one path. And then I would go through here and just make sure that this looks accurate. So now we got kind of the foundation, the base of our shape built. Now it's all about refinement. So I would draw this uh, kind of cover. We can delete these now that we got the structure. Um, and you see how this one just gets cut off and then this has the rounding at the bottom. So first we add rounding here to the desired amount, whatever looks natural to us. And then this one, we're also gonna add the same rounding to keep it visually consistent, but we're gonna cut it off. So. That was 34 pixels, this will be 34 pixels. And we're gonna bring in back this object. I'm gonna place it at the very top and then I'm gonna uh, 
I use the shortcut to flatten a shape, which is option command O. And then we're gonna subtract this. I'm gonna switch back to regular Figma. So we're gonna click subtract and then we're almost there, honestly. I would just delete some of this here so that it doesn't stick out there. And we're gonna subtract it from here. Okay, hold on, I didn't flatten that. So let's subtract this here. Boom. Now we can copy and paste this, this layer, this kind of overlay layer, and we can delete this to make it flat. And then we can delete this. And then the last step is adding this kind of great, subtle gradient that so that it looks like it's going behind. And I would just draw, or I would just, you can just copy this, go into edit mode, copy, paste, and then you can just add a gradient and then place it behind. And just delete this other extra one. And then we just make a subtle gradient like this. And then last but not least, you can see that this inside is rounded and then these corners are rounded. So I'll just keep it consistent and do, let's just do 24 pixels for this. Um, actually, let's do 16. I always keep my, uh, my rounding consistent, even numbers. So 16, we added to all of them. And then here, if we wanted to do that, what I would do, just copy paste this object, place it right behind there. I'm gonna save this. And then I would flatten it and then add rounding to this. Let's say that's eight. And there we have it. That other logo looks like it has a little bit less, so let's go back to four. And yeah, there you go. Boom. That's logo number two complete. All right, and last but not least, we have the quote unquote difficult logo. And the reason why I say it's difficult is because it's kind of, it has a lot of geometry built in and it's sitting like these cards here are on an isometric plane. But luckily with Figma, we can create isometric logos a lot easier. So first we're gonna build this kind of background shape. Um, so we're gonna go to the shape selector and we're gonna select the polygon. And then we're gonna increase the amount of corners here. And then we're going to round it out a little bit. So now we have the back panel shape. Now let's create these. And the way I'm gonna do that is by uh, drawing a square. And then I'm going to go to plugins and do uh, use fast isometric plugin. So once you open up that plugin, um, you select the shape that you wanna use and you can place it on any of these angles, which is pretty awesome. So because they're facing that way, I'm gonna use this and we have our shape there. Now I'm gonna scale it down and I'm gonna copy it. Let's do 50% opacity so we can see what we're doing. And then we just wanna copy it uh, the same distance apart. So I got three of these, they're the same distance, and now we just align it to our outer shape here. Um, let me just revert this back to zero. So now you can see that it's almost aligned perfectly. I'm gonna copy and paste this, and then we're gonna make it red outline. And then we're gonna scale this down so that we can see that uh, geometry and help. this can help us guide where it should go. So it looks like something like this is in the center. Awesome. Now I always make duplicates of everything. And that's one thing I would recommend always copy and make variations and duplicates of everything so that you can always go back if something, you know, breaks or you change your mind. So let's go back to rounding this. We're going to round it. Um, I'm not going to make it as round as that example, because I want to make this logo like better in my opinion, from what I did when I first designed this, this was like a couple years ago now. But if I was to redesign this like I am now, I would make it slightly less round. So let's say 16 pixels. And then because this is a sharper corner, once you apply rounding, so like so let's say eight pixels, that and this corner is gonna have a different amount of uh, like rounding to it. You see how this looks more rounded than that? Because this is a wider open angle, that one's more compressed. So to balance it out, 
you can um, honestly just do it visually. So let's say like this is 10 and this is eight. Um, so we got that and then I can just duplicate this. I don't have to redo it again. So I can just duplicate it and then I can remove the other one that's not rounded just for consistency. There you go. Um, and then we're gonna make the same angle here. So again, I'm gonna select all of these and where are these shapes? Select all these shapes and we're gonna copy it over just so we have a have it there. Um, I'm gonna click Command E to flatten all of the roundings on these so they don't change. And then we're gonna apply a gradient here. So let's start with a blue color, um, light blue. And then we put select down here in the middle and we can do a different shade. And then the bottom one here, we can do a different shade. And you can just click or hover over here and you're gonna see the rotation tool and you can, it'll allow you to rotate. Um, so I'm not crazy about these color combinations so far and I'm just gonna keep kind of tweaking it a little bit until I like the, the gradient. Just make this a little bit lighter. Okay, now we're gonna make this full opacity white. I'm just gonna copy and paste that style over and we wanna add a gradient. So add the gradient, copy and paste this and then change this to 20 and you can see it's gonna have like a gradient. Um, now I'm just gonna add the rounding to the corner since we're there visible. And I kind of like showing the pages behind. It really adds to the depth. Like here, I, I removed it. I subtracted this from this, but I think in this version, I wanna keep it together. And it looks like it wasn't updated for some reason. So let me redo that. So now we have the rounding. I'm actually increase this to 12. Okay, so now we have the rounding and we wanna add the little page flap. So the way I'm gonna do this is, I'm gonna copy this over and let me just show you. So I have these two and I'm going to click intersect so that we just have this shape here. And then I'm gonna double click and open editor and I'm going to uh, remove these points. And then we're gonna place it back here. And this is where we kind of have to finesse it a little bit. Um, so that's gonna be kind of our rounded corner edge. And then here is where we can, we can drag this back here and like that. And now when I select it, I select this point and I round it you'll see it'll start kind of looking like a page that's being flipped. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Basically, you just create another point on this line, drag it back here so it's aligned to the back, more or less the same angle. And then you just add a rounding to it. And then here we can remove these points and just kind of play with the way it looks. And you can increase or decrease the, the rounding to get that effect. Kind of page flip effect. And if you want, you can flatten it and there you can go and start kind of moving it with the pixels. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this vector and we're gonna subtract the top of this page because this overlap is gonna take over. And on the overlap here, we're gonna do
we're gonna give a little bit of a light to dark here as if it's turning. So this back piece, we want it to be a little bit darker, like the, the page is turning. And then you might need to just visually fix this here. So a little bit of cleanup. And I would, I would remove these uh, extra points here. You can just delete these, a little bit of cleanup. Cool, so that's how I would build this. Um, of course, if we wanna go back to the way it was where it overlaps, we just make this 100% opacity and then we just um, select this and then make it lighter. Or the other option is we just duplicate this and subtract it from the vector below. And now we can apply that same gradient and there's nothing below it because we subtracted it so same thing here like i would flatten this subtract it and now i can add the gradient to all three pages and it looks like that so that's how i would build that um a little bit more finesse with that one just because there's a lot going on but now you can see how you can create these kind of isometric logos on the grid i hope you enjoyed that video if you learned something valuable please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one Cheers.